Well, build my gallows and build them high Makes a long time climbing before I die I want the chance to spit in his eye Well, he gave me balls, but I can see between To a dusty yard and a long gone green They call that freedom, if you know what I mean And I drown my sorrows, but the whiskey's gone Hello everybody, welcome to Short Bangers. I'm Matt A. I've got Colin and John on. We're still recording from Ellis, so I'll go through the formalities of asking how you are, because I don't imagine it's changed. Well, it might have changed since we started the last one, because you might be thoroughly pissed off by now, eh? Or bored, or whatever. Are either of you thoroughly pissed off or bored? A yeah. bit pissed off about your history result, but no bored. <laughs> It's modern studies. Modern studies. The, the oh, modern studies, sorry, sorry. The, sorry. The, 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 the person's confession was about his confession. History, but, uh, uh, aye, right. So the same thing. You cheated your education, my. It's an outrage. now though. That's what happens now at schools. They teach you how to pass the exam. They teach you the subject. Aye. It's fucking genius. That's why exam results have went up. To be fair, well, like modern studies was watching boys in the hood, wasn't it? We've been talking about this before, yeah. Carl. I'm sure it's we didn't really learn yep. that much in modern studies. So I think we ever watched it from start to end, though. It was just like. Bits and pieces. Aye, we didn't have long enough, and uh, even if it's a double period, it wouldn't be enough time to watch it. I think. Yeah. Time they'd. Uh, it used to be good because if you were at school and you saw the teacher wheeling in the video, because I mean, it used to be the like telly. the telly and the, yeah. the video, you'd be like, yes, yeah, your dancer, those were the best, the, the best lessons. Did Unless, you have a TV room that also doubled up as like the music room or something? I mean, didn't I mean, have a TV Maybe, maybe not at high school, but it, it happened at my at mid called a primary school. I remember it clearly. Uh, one th- this, this so this uh, music room was also the TV room, so you'd maybe go in there and watch films or whatever. But it was also where I got uh, sex education, like one video, and it was the most brutal depiction I think of sex ever. And it was like <clears throat> it was almost like you, you know how have you seen the the MRI scan that they did recently of like two people having sex, and you see the the willy the penis going inside the the vagina. And you see it moving about in that. It was almost like a very like 1980s and early 1990s version of that. Obviously, it wasn't an MRI. It was just some sort of like, graphic representation. Anyway, all these... Just the teacher in front of the class doing this. <laughs> um, anyway, so however old it was, like, I must have been somewhere between like primary five, probably about primary five, certainly no later than primary six. And the entire class is silent, just in rapture or horror at what they're witnessing on this like pokey wee like fourteen inch right at the front of the tele- uh, the front of the room. And of course, I farted. <laughs> it's just utter silence, and I let one go. <laughs> anyway, carry on. Do you think they try to put you off at school? What? Put when you're doing that. Aye, because I, I remember um, who's it, Mrs. McAvoy called? Was it one of the guidance teachers? Wasn't Aye. She? I remember her telling a story about pubic lice that you could catch and how they would they could crawl up into your armpit and everything and you'd end up just like totally riddled and you're like, oh, fuck, that's terrible, that. Um, <laughs> and cause, cause, that's not a nice story to tell. I suppose they're, they're kind of warning you what could happen. I don't even care if that's true. They care if they would climb up. They wouldn't, they'd have a great chance to be like, I'm not a hairy person, but... Um, aye. Oh, it takes know. that in, 80295. It's sex education there, they put you on shit. Right. How far up did your pubic lice get? 80295. <laughs> um, <laughs> pictures if you've got them. Uh, right, questions. Neil uh, said, uh, as the billionaire space rate race hots up, who would you most like to see stuck in space out of Bezos, Branson and Musk? So they try to go up to get stuck. Which of those three would you like to see stranded in space? Can we talk about their respective qualities as we see them and try and pick a candidate out of the three? Because I think there's a candidate amongst the three of them. Like each of them is a, a really good candidate for just being stranded in space. Like Major Tom, David Bowie, just fucked off <laughs> to the far reaches of the universe. Cheerio. Bye. See you later. Right. Well, well what's your answer? And what's your rationale for it, uh, John? Shows you're working. Branson just strikes me as a bit of a throbber. 
Aye. He's also awesome. like, was he not involved in what was what was the name of the? Was it? Uh, would I mean it was Virgin Trains? But did they not sue the government over? I think it was NHS, lottery, wasn't it? And the NHS, he, he was wanting to, to do stuff for the NHS, and I think he, oh. he sued because he didn't get the contracts for that as well, and the lottery. He does Aye, make so nice that, pickle, that's, though. That's the thing, kind of, if you're having like a green <laughs> lunch. If you like that. Yeah. 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 Kind of Aye, but that, you surely, that. surely your pickle only only makes up for one of the, the court cases he brought out yeah. against the NHS or the government, and so he, that's, he, that's him. He did also complain about not being able to pay staff and that at the start of COVID, despite owning a fucking island and having a island. project to get himself into fucking space. So, um, he's he's up there. I think I've seen before all that. It is, I know, but before that, I remember there was like a, there was a bad train crash and that, and the, the driver was getting a hard time for it, and he came back and defended them because he was one of his staff and all that. Came came back for a holiday uh, and all that, and I thought well, that's that's a bit of respect there for that. Um, but they came about the lottery thing. And, I don't know if it doesn't, just because they've done a court case against the government. So, Aye. You know, it doesn't mean it can become just a bad loser. Yes, he's probably no use to losing out in business deals, so he's took the half and, and he's had enough money to do that. And he, I've got a Virgin credit card, and I get into that wee hang in St Andrew's Square. There's a wee cafe thing you can go into. It's partly because you've got a you've got a credit card with them. Oh, fucking you friends with Branson. You go in, you get a free You're your pal Richard. Uh, Ricky, we call him. Well, with Bezos, Bezos hasn't got any redeeming features, has he? Other than obviously, he can't seem to run a business. Eh? Like, I mean, Amazon are like working on top of everything, but they are a sh- they are the biggest shower of Aye. the next Tuesday's gone. Like, everything that they and do yet, is about shafting folk so he can make and yet, plans. You've yeah. probably bought yourself something off Amazon within the last three weeks, two mm-hmm. weeks, week. Aye. Aye, they're good. Eh? <laughs> <clears throat> they do care what they're doing. <laughs> I think the thing that my, my biggest concern about Bezos and blasting them off into the far reaches of the universe is that he strikes me as a, so much as a, a supervillain that he'll he'll find a way to come back and just make things ten times worse for you. Like a big Doctor Evil he, laser. Aye, he might be sort of better the devil you know, keep him on side, on planet. Do you know what though, right? These boys are spending however many millions and billions to fucking on an ego trip to get into space. The three boys together with the money they don't need could easily solve so many problems in the world, right? They could get into world poverty. They could eradicate world poverty. Uh, Twitter account is is it has Bezos ended world poverty? Aye. No, he's not. No, every day. Aye. Aye. Because yeah, it's, it's it's they could they could and you think you know they could actually instead of becoming like whatever they think they're going to be for being in space, it could actually be like legends in history forever because the because they sorted that out. And he didn't need That's by just going to the bank manager, just send that money came to wherever it goes. He didn't need a billion pounds, but you can't you can't ever spend it, right? It's just, no. it's it's one of these things is like fucking ludicrous. This is where I get on my high horse. If I was government, I would tax them. Like, even if you say I'll let you have half a billion pounds, right? and then anything you have over half a billion pounds, that just gets fucking taxed off you, and we'll put it towards things like uh, uh, world poverty or fucking financial. But they would think ways to avoid it. Aye, because they, 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 they do. They Amazon just say I'm not fucking paying it, and they don't. But that's if it. if you're the government and you make them do that, it's kind of you, just, you find all the wee loopholes and you go close that and close that and close that and make can't fucking pay it. Um, that's what I would, we were talking about this other day, right? You'll be able to tell me why this is a bad idea, right? Because it's stupid. But mind when the financial collapse happened? What was that? Twenty twelve? When two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. Aye, aye, bloody hell. According to the reason. Right, mind they said, what we'll do is we'll just print more money. And then I worry about it, okay, we'll just print more money and that'll sort it out. And you go, that's good, because the government owns, kind of, just runs up this massive deficit and they go, never have to pay it back. Right, that's how, how it works. They've got this debt, but it's, it doesn't matter. Independent Scotland, right? This is this would be my sales pitch if I wanted to make an independent Scotland. So they came up with, we'll have a Bank of Scotland, right? No, like the Bank of Scotland that, that we had before, but like a central Bank of Scotland. We'll have some rules in place, say like a pound here will track a pound in the rest of Britain, right? So it keeps its value. But see for things like schools, hospitals, okay, roads, public services, your police, your fire engines, uh, fire service, and all the rest of it. We'll just, the quantity of reason, we'll just make money, make money to pay for all that. So you won't we'll bother taxing you. We'll, we'll just pay it out of that. Why not do that? Once you, print, once you print more of the value, you're. Well, money drops. 
So is Harvard should win it. And you say, so what, what would happen is we don't end up with loads of money. And you, you put rules out that say, right, see if I can Tesco, your loaf of bread can go up to £20 because everybody's got loads of money to buy a loaf of bread. You need to cost the same as what we're doing in, uh, like in London or, or fucking Manchester or whatever. That's your benchmarks. If you're charging them a pound, our pound's worth the same as their pound. Your loaf of bread's still a pound. And that's the law. And if you go fucking too far above it, we'll take all that money back and we'll pay it back off to the folk that we didn't actually need to pay off anyway because it's all to ourselves, like fucking hearts. So all that would happen is we'd all be fucking, we don't have money. Can you go have three holidays? Take, four, take a couple of months off your work because you can afford to do it. That's what life's about, isn't it? You just let your citizens have a fucking life instead of this drudgery that you think, I've got to work because I've got fucking got to pay taxes, I've got to deal with it, feed, feed the kids, if I can keep a, a, house, a roof over my head. That's fine. Yeah, keep your money. You've earned it. You worked hard for it. You want a nice house, you can afford it now because we'll pay for all the shite that we've been taking money off you before. So you say no tax on anybody in, it, in this independent Scotland I, I, get print the money part, and just say that's your equivalent of your tax? Apart from the billionaires. Ken and the business. <laughs> the business. <laughs> that's it. We'll take it off of them. Mm. And then the folk who actually need the money can keep their money. So, folk, fear me. That's we don't it. need it anymore. Because we've got it. Aye, that, that's it. You'll we'll be comfortable. You'll have, you'll have enough to live. You'll, you'll have folk going, need to use a food bank or that. They'll be going, I can't get a food bank food now to go to waste because they didn't even need it. Uh, but you can you, you just, you could do like, you know, like the universal basic income. Some kind of... Aye. Communism, you think you can call it. You're going to suggest aye, aye. that. So, no, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying the state owns everything. So, you could still, if you want to own your own house, that's fine. If you want to be an entrepreneur and go and start a business, I'd encourage you to go and do it. You go and live your dream, live your best life. That's the same. You, you, you want to no work for like fucking man making some. Because what we do now, right? And all of us that are in employment generally are making some rich folk richer. And we, we, you know, we take what pay that we th they think we're worth. But what we do just keeps rich folk getting richer and widens the gap. That's kind of how it, how it works. And you say, this doesn't really need to be like that. Why? Why could you know, Colin, if you could afford to do it, or you, John, right, you could afford to do it and say, if you could have done anything with your life, what would you want to do? Because you could do that for all your kids now. You want, to, like, you want to have a career in football, right? What do you need to do to be able to do it? I need to be able to afford to go with my UEFA licences, take some time off to do it, whatever. That's fine. How much would you need to do it? Fuck it. Right, but I'm sure you can afford to do it now because you've got money. How happy would everybody be? Like, you'd have to be crime or fuck all like that because folk would need to be criminals. You wouldn't have folk going to turn into drugs and drink to, to make their life better because their life would already be good. But you would legalise drugs as well, presumably, in this. Oh, uh, why? Because that makes it better. Aye. Everybody's dead happy. Go, go have some fun. <laughs> 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 but but I, I was like, well, again, there's the thing about rates. Right, so the hyperinflation is the problem. That's what you were getting at. Is if you put too much money into the economy, that's where it all, all goes wrong. But you must be able to regulate it because when they did quantitative easing and they put billions and billions of pounds into the economy, did they, did they change anything? I didn't notice any fucking difference. So, why could they know that? Well, the petrol prices not went up, didn't they? Ah, fucking that's because they just wanted to tax folk. That, that is what that was. It was like, well, we need to look like we're trying to pay some of this back. They never fucking paid any back. It got worse. They borrowed more. It's just a big con. So, so I would just say if he, the if he, argument, the argument for sending Elon Musk on a one-way trip into space. Tax <laughs> 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 him first, though. Take all his money off him, and then and as he's going away, tell him we've got your money. He can get the finger. <laughs> send the gun into space, and then let him come back until he pays his tax. Aye. Well, that's uh, by the way, enough. that's a great shout. They can't land. Who know? You can pay a tax, eh? No coming back in here, pal. You're just we will aye, a fill tax. you up with oxygen. Aye, we, as soon as you pay a decent pay. A while decent we were up there, we back. voted through a landing tax for anybody who's in space at the time. It's just just coincidence. If <laughs> if you'd been twenty minutes early, you would have missed it. But it's been voted through now. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, Musk kind of got away quite scot free eh, out of that conversation. He's uh, Tesla, isn't he? I'm would, you sure he is. would you change your name if your surname was Musk because of the connotations? Yeah, it's like a really, really nice skin. Something's musky. It's no, it's no a nice connotation. Like you'd have a, well, I think, a, a, a musky wank have... sock, for example. <laughs> is that is that musky or is that musty? <laughs> Probably both. 
<laughs> like I thought Musk or like Musk was like uh like a pheromone or is it is there not a, a men's aftershave something well, musk? There'll be there'll be one in one of the you ever seen the aftershaves in Poundland or the shops like that again Pound World or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but we used to have one at Hermiston Gate. I don't know if it's still there, but sometimes we would go in at lunchtime because you could go and kind of get a couple of bags of crisps and a bottle of juice for next to nothing. Uh, three Nestle crunches for like a pound. And that. Aye, for a pound. And the aftershaves, they had one called Dinner Jacket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you wear the night. It's Dinner Jacket for men. <laughs> dinner, <laughs> dinner Jacket. But what I like about that is they'll, they'll have sat in like a wee room, kind of when they're doing the design for the marketing and that. Go right. What would we make the package look like? What we call it? My well, folks shouting out after eight. No, that's not anyone that's there. Uh, uh, Sauvage. No, that's been used. Dinner jacket. Fuck it. Bingo. Bingo. Yes. Yes. They'll all be high fiving each other. That's it. Dinner jacket. Get into the printers. Get that in the shops right now. Uh, right. Next question. Chatter. Did Neil uh, Tennant from the Pet Shop Boys find out what he did to deserve whatever happened to him and did he get through it? What's this a reference to? So, uh, the, the, yeah, the Pet Shop Boys said, what have I, what have I, what have I done to deserve this? And he says, what have I, a few times, I don't know if that's like a speech impediment that he had or if it was just to fit into the music, but... Uh, and then somebody else sung, I've got to get through this as well. That was the second part of the question. <laughs> who's on that again? Daniel Bedingfield. Oh, Daniel Bedingfield. That's right. That's exactly who it was. <laughs> so, what do you think he did? What, what, what do you think he was, uh, it was happening to him? Well, he was gay in the 80s. He probably yeah. got a lot of grief. He's probably saying, what did they deserve this? I think that's a good shout. I mean, quite, yeah. Have you seen, uh, what was the show on, uh, the show on Channel 4 about that era? And it was from another, Aye, the, another Pet the Shop Boys song. Why can I not remember the name? It's fucking brilliant, by the way. Great show. That's really good. Um, yeah. So I remember it was that. I was thinking maybe he's had a day with all the traffic lights are red and he's trying to get somewhere in a hurry. It's like a that sin. Was, That's the song it's you're thinking on. That's it. It's a yeah. sin. You should, folks should watch that. It's fucking brilliant. Um, really good. Or he stubbed his toe or maybe he's gone to make a cup of tea and he's poured the milk in and then noticed it's a couple of days out of date. And he's going, what have I done to deserve this? There'll be floaters in it. Uh, or he's poured a bowl of cereal and found that there's a dribbly milk, but no more. Aye. Or poured the cereal in, and there's no and enough. And get all the shite at the end. Aye, th there's and no enough. It's, it's like you've only got a quarter, aye, quarter bowl of cereal with the shite at the end. Oh. That's what I think happened to him. Uh, Char also... That's probably made like the man. Aye. Is Donnelly and Tanner out the best transfer of the summer? So... I've only seen, seen him once. I've seen him uh, the last week. Uh, I wasn't at the game last week. I just got back for, for my holiday. But uh, it's a, a popular popular move. He was he, he was decent though compared. I mean, Tanner. I was never a Tanner didn't bother me that much. He was a bit cringy in that, and that he looked a bit awkward sometimes. But he was all right. He was more a, he's more like a pitch side presenter. Donnelly's a TV presenter. I mean, t t I think. It's Tanner's job no normally stand at the pitch side interviewing managers and that. But Whereas when he's in the studio, he always looked a bit awkward. But the thing is, with Hibs TV, it's just fucking advert after advert after advert anyway. So do you actually need anybody there? Just like <clears> the game up. You it's like say it's advert after advert. It's, like it's income after income after <laughs> income. Support the ad squad. Then the game <laughs> but then we're paying Dougie Donnelly. So like we're putting on these adverts on to pay him his wages. Just put the adverts on and put the game on. It's like a, a televised version of the programme. That you get now, Kevin. You get like the program comes, you see the emails, and here's your digital program. And you go, Oh, good, I look forward to reading this. And you open it, and it's like okay, one article, and then it's just there's a squad at the back page. That's I bet, it. I bet, I bet. <laughs> squad. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think they're, uh, they're not doing paper programs anymore. I think that those days are, are gone. I think I read somewhere. Uh, part of the Greenish Club. Maybe, and... I think it's just collectors that buy them, though. Eh? It's not really, maybe bought the program. I mean, there's nothing in it that you can't find out. On the internet or whatever in the week, the week builder, yeah, really. It's Jack, Jack Ross interview. They've said the same at the press conference. You know what I mean? It's no, there's nothing, nothing you can access really. Jack, folk have missed a trick by no rolling them up into wee sort of megaphones to, to loudly <laughs> exactly. to get their, get the aye to get their point across. Like a lead version of the Vuvuzela. Aye. <laughs> Maybe they should bring back the programs for that reason. 
Uh, right, Fatish Prickus, if we could bring back extinct uh, or endangered species of animal, but we had to get rid of a whole species for every species we brought back or saved, what would be the first animal to go and what would be the first one to be saved or brought back, i.e. white rhinos in, alpacas out? <laughs> so you've got to change. You see, for... white rhinos, I've got a wee bit of an issue with that. I know it's just an example, but are alpacas not used in... I want to say Peru, almost like pack meals for carting stuff about. Maybe. I can't even think of a, a practical use of the white rhino, other than it being big and white and Jim Carrey taking a piss out of it in East Ventura. But maybe if you trained it, Ken, who's to say if you didn't try to train it to, to, to pack meal stuff and just replace it? <laughs> See, what are you trying to train a fucking white rhino to do? <laughs> It's the biggest, angriest fucker in the Serengeti. Who's tried? That's what I'm saying, John. Who's tried? <laughs> they get enough treats. That's the thing. I mean, it's good. <laughs> it's have to find out what it likes. <laughs> get a wee quicker to reward it. Is he, is he, exactly, is he suggesting that he suggested they get rid of the alpacas? Are they no good for like folk? Like yeah. stress things and that. Aye, but aye. Uh, again, who's to say the way? They no good for that void. Aye. aye. So you could bring it in and say, because we had to a chance for. Well, you know that you, I can do it. So why would you get rid of it to train <laughs> something up to do it? Like, madness. <laughs> they, they did it on the uh, mental health day at uh, my old work. They brought in three or four alpacas for folk to pet because it is meant to be. And I'm just uh, envisaging the carnage and say, mental health day of the day. What have we got? Four white rhinos. <laughs> 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 Let's why? see who we get on. <laughs> Uh, I think so, uh, one to get rid of is good to be a midge or a mosquito or something. Eh? One of these aye. queens and nurses that what do they actually bring for us? Like, what are they? What are they Misery. Aye, midges are a good shout for going. So, what would you bring in for? And the, th the thing is, if you're bringing a species back that's been wiped out, do you think it'll have learned its lesson, or are you just going to bring it back and then, can twenty years time, you're like, oh, fuck, that was a waste of time. We're two down now because the thick wee bastards never changed. They just. So we have like a, a get out clause. So say for example, we get rid of midges, and then in twenty years' time, we find out that actually they are a valuable food source for some other species that's actually really good for us. Can we say actually bring back the midge? Let's undo this madness. Can't right, we can bring them the, back. We could create in the contract. We could negotiate that in the terms of the God or whoever it is we're talking to. You ever uh, accidentally swallowed a midge? Probably. It's no nice. I hate it, kid. Like if you if you're recycling or something, especially John, you said you was you done the West Highland Way. Yeah, because that's Midget Central up there. Like I think you could go because yeah, you, unless you're just continually breathing through your nose and kept your mouth shut the whole time, there's no way you can go through that volume of midges and not have one go in your mouth. So the the bit that I saw it was um, in particular was uh, a place called King's House, which has since been demolished and rebuilt, and it's quite nice and. And the old uh, climbers bar that they had out the back of the sort of the main hotel and the main restaurant bar, but <clears throat> they had a midgy catching machine they called it, and I'm sure it was basically just like a, a reconditioned Hoover or something, and it just sat there on like a sort of permanent suck, and they had this massive sort of canister, and all you could see inside was almost like little black rice crispy things, that, you know, just fucking millions of midges. But it was later on after climbing out of Kinloch Leaven and heading towards Fort William. It's a 16 mile walk, and normally you would probably stop two or three times just for a wee breather. Yeah, that probably. You know, something to eat. What was that? I'd stop more than that. 16 mile walk, <laughs> it would be more than two or three times. Every so McDonald's. that was probably that was probably one of the most. I don't know if it was like the sort of conditions underfoot, if it was quite boggy, quite marshy, because I think that's where the midges tend to favour the most. Um, we were never able to stop once on those 60 miles because any time he did it was just a swarm so it was kind of like he'd do and just get to the end it was brutal but but if you're ever going out and doing anything like that get some avon skin so soft and get yourself a wee squat of that the wee fuckers attached to it and just die great uh right uh, do you have a preference what you're bringing back this is i, I can't mind all the i don't have a list of the ones that are extinct do those. That's the problem. Duck billed what? platypus. I want they, the name brought back. Are they extinct? Aye. All right. 
Uh, I'll go for the dodo just because. Uh, it's the most right. famous one. Aye, that is the most famous one. You're right. So, right, oh, no, wait, 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 hang on, hang on. Maybe it's no. Maybe it's fucking. Have you jumped the gun here? Well, it's not too late. This will not get this How many on... devil? I think they're fucked as well. Uh, well that would be a good one as well because the cartoon's brilliant. So you could get them back. But if you're wrong about the duck, well, party piss, John, this episode will not go out until Friday. So you do have a few hours to go and kill the remaining ones. So you didn't look stupid. So it says it's not extinct. I was sure it was extinct. I must be thinking of something else. Maybe it's the dodo, actually. Aye. Uh, right, Kaiser Sozy, Kirby or Kirby? Kirby. Kirby, yeah. But it's against the curb because it, but it's Kirby. It is, isn't it? Did he see kids playing that anyway, Do you know what my problem with calling it Kirby is? It's a drive, isn't it? Uh, it's a sort of, uh, cars parked on the pavements as well, so there's no space for it. Yeah. You no, know, like the good uh, old days. Eh? Objection to calling it Kirby is the pronunciation of Derby. You didn't call it a Derby. You didn't call it Edinburgh Derby. It's Edinburgh Derby. Therefore, it's Kirby, no Kirby. That seems logical to me. I'll go with that. Yep. Uh, the words said, uh, apart from money, why... This is so, this makes me seem like I can't read, but this is how it's written down. Uh, no offence. Like they can't write then. I, 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 think what it, I think what they explicitly say it, but they're go right. Apart from money, why, how many reasons can you come up with for leaving Scotland to go to Rotherham? So I, I thought it was because uh, who was the boy from Hamilton? Adolphin? Is that his name? Adolphin? We is tried he going to, sign, to uh, We tried to sign Adolphin from Rotherham. Maybe as part of a part exchange from an extinct uh, animal. I don't know. But we couldn't sign the Dolphin because he was signing for Rotherham. There was obviously there was a reason somebody like Stubbsy went to Rotherham. I can't mind what the reason was. He left Hibs. There was lots of it was, because, it, it was because he didn't think it would better the Scottish Cup. Aye, I'll that go with that. Life. I'm sure that, I don't think if that was the rumour I had, but that's, that's one we'll go with. The only reason you do it, <laughs> the only reason you're doing it is for money, right? Aye. That's it. There's no other, there's no other reason. Because Rotherham uh, doesn't even sound like a nice place. Eh? But I've, you, you hear the word Rotherham and you imagine somewhere like Milton Keynes or something like that, doesn't it? Like York, well, you think York's yes. quite a nice place. Even you, you hear the name York, you think that's probably quite nice. Yeah. Rotherham does this sound good. Rotherham. Is that where we got John Newell from? Hmm? There are two questions you want to Did he? I don't know. It's, it's a line in an Arctic Monkey song. It's aye, um, Fail Tales of San Francisco, aye. Um, mm. But aye, John Newell, did we not yeah. get him for Rotherham? I say we did. Uh, right, aye. we're out of time for, for this episode. That went fast. Um, confession. <laughs> So this, this one uh, came in, and we'll obviously, again, no see who it was. Uh, but this one says, if nobody laughs at my jokes when I'm drunk, I invariably make the mistake of thinking they just didn't hear them, and so I repeat them again in a louder voice. Can that feeling in? Uh, right, thanks for listening. We'll have the third and final episode out for you probably Saturday. Tune in for that. Until then, we'll catch you next time. <laughs> Well, they trailed me down when I broke free. I drank all the whiskey in Tennessee.